What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7. Hallelujah. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment. The death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection and he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifices, offering you eternal life, if you believe that, and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. The word, word repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind, to truly turn to God. Turn from your sins and turn to God. Have a change, change of life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. No. Uh, there's a couple of people in my family who have cancer. Pray for Lynette. Pray for uh, Ruth. Pray for my father. Uh, uh, he has an infection in his abdomen. And let's pray for one another. Let's support one another. Let's be right with God. Second Samuel 7. Now it came about when the king lived in his house. And Yahuwah had given him rest on every side from all his enemies. That the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of God dwells within tent, tent curtains. The ark was still in the tabernacle. Nathan said to the king, Go do, that all, go do all that is in your mind, for Yahuwah is with you. But in the same night, the, in the, same night, the word of Yahuwah, which was actually Jesus. The word of Yahuwah came to Nathan saying, Go and say to my servant David, Thus says Yahuwah, Are you the one who should build me a house to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up the sons of Israel from Egypt, even to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent, even in, in a tabernacle. Wherever I have gone with all the sons of Israel, did I speak a word with one of the tribes of Israel, which I command, commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says Yahuwah of armies, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the names of the great men who are on the earth. I will also appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them. And this is ultimately what we're going to see here in a minute is a, a prophecy about Jesus. It's a pro prophecy about Solomon and Jesus, and Solomon was a type, a foreshadowing of Jesus. And this house that he's speaking about is the new Jerusalem. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be where I am in his kingdom. Hallelujah. I will also appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may live in their own place and not be disturbed again, ever again. Nor will the wicked afflict them any more as formerly. He's speaking about the kingdom of God. Even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. Or even from the day that I commanded my judges to be over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Yahuwah also declares to you. That Yahuwah will make a house for you. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers. I will raise up 
your descendant after you, who will come forth from you, and I will establish his kingdom. So this is a, 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 this is, is a dual prophecy about his son Solomon and also about his uh, distant descendant, David, uh, Jesus, Yeshua. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you who will come forth from you and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name. And so this is also a dual prophecy because Solomon built the physical temple for God. But Jesus built the temple, which we are all temples of the Holy Spirit through him. But in the same way that we are all temples of the Holy Spirit, we all combine. Uh, uh, let me put it like this. The Bible says we are all different members of the body of Christ. All different members of the bodies. The, the Bible says some are eyes, some, have, some are legs, some are... We're all different members of the body. Different parts of the body of Christ. But we all come together to form the whole body of Christ with, with Jesus himself being the head. And in the same way as that, we are all individual uh, temples of the Holy Spirit that build up the whole temple of God, which ultimately is correlated with the New Jerusalem. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you, who will come forth from you, and, he, and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall build a house for, for my name. It's a dual prophecy about Solomon and Jesus. And I will establish the, th the throne of his kingdom forever. That's more specifically a prophecy about Jesus. And look at this. Harassment. That's gangs talking. So one eye symbolism. The Illuminati, Antichrist, Beast Kingdom symbolism. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Seen about 30 to 40 of those today. So one more time from verse 12. When your days are complete, and you lie down with your fathers. I will raise up your descendant after you who will come forth from you. And, he, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me. The son of God. I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me. And this part is more specifically about Solomon because we know Jesus didn't commit any iniquity. It says, when he commits iniquity, which is sin or lawlessness, I will correct him with the rods, with the rod of men and the strokes of the sons of men. And Jesus took that rod upon himself. He took those strokes for us. He took those uh, blows on the back for us. He's whipped for us. And when he commits iniquity, in other words, in the, in the second part of this prophecy, it's our iniquity. By his, stripes, by his stripes, by that rod upon his back, we are healed. When he commits iniquity, or when we commit iniquity in the end time prophecy, or the, the further prophecy of this, I will correct him with the rods of men. And the, and the strokes of the sons of men. But my loving kindness shall not depart from him as, a, as I took it away from Saul, whom I, I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever in accordance to all these words and all this vision. So Nathan, Nathan spoke to David. And, you know, Israel was reestablished as, as a nation, nation 2000 uh, well, 40, uh, 74 years ago, this this coming May 14th. And 
Israel that's in the land right now, although, you know, some, some may disagree and say that's not true Israel. I do believe there are true Israelites there. And I know that it is, that it is the prophetic fulfillment of Judah. The house of Judah. In scripture, the Jews are the house of Judah in scripture. The descendants of David. Then David the king went, went in and sat before Yahuwah. And said, who am I, O, o Lord? And I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh, I'm going to say it as Master Yahuwah. It's Lord God in English. But in this instance, a lot of the times when it says Lord, it's actually capital. And that's the name of God, which would be Y-H-W-H. I pronounce it Yahuwah. But when it says God, capital cap with capitals, capital, capital G-O-D, that's also the name of God. So this... That, so that's the Hebrew word Adonai, which means Lord or Master. And that's the name of God. So uh, to make it sound better, to make it sound right, I'm, I'm going to say Master Yahuwah instead of Lord Yahuwah. Then David the king went in and sat before Yahuwah. And just one more example. See right here, it's capital. That's the name of God. That's the Hebrew word Adonai, which means Lord or Master. And that God right there, that's also the name of God. That's the same uh, Hebrew. Uh, that's the name of God, Y-H-W-H. Translated as Lord and God in the same verse. Then David the king went in and sat before Yahuwah. And he said, Who am I, O Master Yahuwah? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? And yet this was insignificant in your eyes, O Lord Yahuwah, or Master Yahuwah. For you have spoken also of the house of your servant concerning the distant future. He said distant future. Because he knew it wasn't only a prophecy for his son. Even though that, I mean, in our life that may, may seem distant. But it was a prophecy about the Messiah. And yet this was insignificant in your eyes, O Master Yahuwah. For you have spoken also of the house of your servant con concerning the distant future. And this is the custom of man, O Master Yahuwah. Again, what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O, ya o uh, Lord Yahuwah. For the sake of your word. And according to your own heart, you have done all this greatness to let your servant know. For this reason you are great, O Master Yahuwah. For there is none like you, and there is no God besides you. Hallelujah. According to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation on all the earth is like your people Israel, whom God went to redeem for himself as a people and to make a name for himself. And to do a great thing for you, and awesome things for your land, before, before your people whom you have redeemed for yourself from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. For you have established for yourself your people Israel, as your own people forever, and you, O Yahuwah, have become their God, hallelujah. Now therefore, O Yahuwah God, and that was uh, as we see right here. It's capital, that's uh, Y-H-W-H in the Hebrew. O Yahuwah God, the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and his house to confirm it forever. And do as you have spoken, that your name may, may be magnified forever by saying, Yahuwah of armies is God over Israel. And may the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, O Yahuwah of armies, the God of Israel, have made a revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. See, he wasn't speaking about a physical house. He's speaking about the kingdom of God. For you, O Yahuwah of armies, the God of Israel, have made a revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. Now, O oh, Master Yahuwah, you are God, and your words are truth. 
and you have promised this good thing to your servant. And so truth, according to the Bible, is the word of God, the law of God, and Jesus. And Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the law of God. The word of God is the law of God. That's truth. No, O oh, oh Master Yahuwah, you are God, and your words are truth. And you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before you. For you, O oh, oh Master Yahuwah, has spoken, and with your blessing, may the house of your servant be blessed forever. Hallelujah. That's the end of 2 Samuel 7. David's prayer. And Lord willing, we'll be able to continue through these chapters. Continue working through the word of God. Through the truth. And uh, let's be ready. He's coming soon. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. We need to be ready. We need to be right with God. We need to stay focused on him. And overcome. In all things. Let's do his will in all things. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, well, let me just say, let's keep his commandments. Let's walk in his ways. Let's spread the word. Let's spread the gospel. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to save you. Give your life to him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's the end of 2 Samuel 7. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.